with Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. But joining us right now to discuss this and the life of Father Patrick Payton is the director of Family Theater Productions, uh, Father David Guffey from the Congregation of the Holy Cross. Good morning to you. Oh, hold on, Father. Hold that thought because I said I was going to play the, the, the trailer first. Let's roll the trailer, Adrian, and then we'll talk to Father David. Today in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, Father Patrick Payton drew the largest crowd in the history of San Francisco. I'd like to speak to you about a remarkable man, Father Patrick Payton. Father Patrick Payton. Patrick Payton. Father Patrick Payton. Father Patrick Payton. I know a man who has dedicated his life teaching others what prayer can do. People try to describe Father Payton, and it's almost like trying to carry water in your hands. It slides through. It was almost unbelievable. You'll be looking around, and all these people are here to listen to him. The energy level was like somebody who was superhuman. We reacted to his voice. It surely was coming from God. But first of all, I'm for prayer. Family prayer. The family that prays together stays together. Good morning to you, Father David Guffey. Good morning. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, praise be to God. Uh, I think you're from uh, the California area, so it's probably uh, beautiful and sunny out there at this time of day. How's it looking right there, Father? Well, we have sunshine on the way, but it's, it's uh, <laughs> still in the beautiful hours of morning right now. Praise be to God. Well, it's good. To, we're glad you got up early and were a part of the program today, especially to talk about the life of Father Patrick Payton. You know, I was saying at the beginning of our program, I personally am a big fan of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Fulton Sheen. I love Fulton Sheen. I think of him often. And I, I just I just remembered like how little I think of Father Patrick Payton, who was also pretty amazing. So tell us about the the life of Father Patrick Payton. Father Pat Patrick Payton uh, grew up in Ireland uh, in a poor family. He was the sixth of nine children. Um, lived on a farm. Uh, when he barely made it through the eighth grade because there wasn't the opportunity. Uh, he and his brother Tom, when he, when Pat was about nineteen, immigrated to the United States thinking that they would become millionaires. Well, they got to the United States and it was pretty, life was pretty tough. Um, Tom got a job at a coal mine in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Pat uh, got a job as a, a janitor in a cathedral in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And he came deeply in contact with the Lord. Uh, when a group of Holy Cross priests came through, uh, he joined that religious order. That's the religious order I belong to. And he became a Holy Cross priest, finished high school, went to college, and then was on his way to becoming a priest in the seminary when he was stricken with tuberculosis. He, he nearly died. And he, um, uh, he was, they called in his family, told him to make peace with the world. And on his deathbed, and a, a Holy Cross priest came in and said, Pat, I know you have a relationship with the Blessed Mother. Trust her turn to her, pray to her. She'll be as good to you as you believe she'll be. Almost like the, the gospel today, See, knock and the door will be open. Well, he knocked that door to, on the for the Blessed Mother and, and she took him to her son, Jesus Christ, and he was healed. He was so grateful. He wanted to give his life to her and he started a family prayer crusade. This is in 1941. Uh, just knowing the stress his families were having and he wanted every family to have what he had growing up a family that prayed together, especially the rosary. He took that message to radio with the help of Fulton, Bishop Fulton Sheen, by the way. Uh, Fulton Sheen was sort of a mentor to Father Peyton and um, ended up having a national radio show in Hollywood each week from 1947 to 1968. He had a radio show with big stars on every week, radio plays, people like Gregory Peck and Lucille Ball and Jack Benny and uh, Loretta Young, just an uh, it's the whole lit master list of Hollywood stars from that era. And then uh, that led to rallies around the world, like huge stadium rallies that had hundreds of thousands of people. He filled Candlestick Park in New York City, 500,000 people in Golden Gate Park in, in San Francisco, a million people in Sao Paulo, uh, 1.2 million people in Manila, always with the wow. message that really was the tagline of our radio show. And that was the family that prays together stays together. That belief is what drove father Peyton his entire life. And it's why we remember him today. That's amazing. Praise be to God. You know, as you were mentioning his radio show from 40, what'd you say? 41 and 47, 47. Well, th that was like a real Catholic time in Hollywood. Uh, you think I think of uh, Bing Crosby's uh, films and 
and uh, th there was a lot of Catholic themes and, and stories that were coming out, and it was uh, a great time for uh, for this content. Why do you, is it because of Father Patrick Payton being so involved in this community that helped to fuel this uh, this Catholic environment there? I think he kind of rode the wave. I, it was a time when a lot of people were turning to faith. This would have been the World War II era, and people were praying for the for the wars, and people recognized the stresses on families that, I mean, they were just experiencing a little of what we see, you know, exploding now, the, 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 all the different diversions and ways that families are, are taken apart by things outside the home. And star, there were a lot of Catholic stars that were really anxious to do things to support their church, to promote the faith. Bing Crosby was certainly one of them. In fact, the first radio show that Father Peyton did was with Bing Crosby, but it happened because Father Peyton went to the Mutual Broadcasting System, which was the second largest radio network at the time. And he um, said, uh, I want to do a radio show. And they said, okay, but you have to have a big star. You have to have this kind of music. You have this kind of, he said, well, who's the biggest star? And they said, uh, Bing Crosby. And Father Peyton said, all right. And he cold called <laughs> Bing Crosby on Good <laughs> Friday in 1945. <laughs> and um, got Bing Cros and Bing Crosby agreed to do this show. So the first radio show was in on May thirteenth, Fatima, um, in nineteen forty five on Mother's Day, and then uh, two years later he got a network show, and that was on from forty seven to sixty eight. That's one of the things that really stuck out to me about Father Peyton is that for him it was go big or go home. Yeah. So. All right, we're going to hold that thought there. We have to take a very short break. Father David Guffey is our guest from the Congregation of the Holy Cross and director of Family Theater Productions, talking about the life of Father Patrick Peyton, an amazing man. Uh, the family that st uh, prays together stays together. That He made that famous, and boy, is it stuck. We're going to be right back. We'll have more conversation, plus the movie. We're giving away the movie, but we're going to talk about that coming up right now. Uh, Father David uh, Guffey, welcome back to the show. Good to be with you. So let's talk about the film. Uh, what I know uh, Family Theater Productions has been doing a lot of work. You personally have been involved in a lot of uh, short films and, and other types of projects. Tell us about that, and then tell us how you got uh, motivated to make a, a film particular to Father Patrick Payton. Sure. Family Theater Productions is the production company that was founded by Father Peyton. We continue his ministry of trying to use the media to draw people to Christ and to promote family prayer and to support families and their needs. I started working at Family Theater in 2008, and when I started working there, uh, we're in the same offices that Father Peyton worked out of when when he was in Hollywood. Wow! And uh, but you know, we had a we had a film vault in the basement that was filled with records and audio tape and videotape and films of, of every size and format. And I started to digitize that uh, to see what, what was there. And a lot of it was, you know, one of the, you know, Father Peyton produced over a hundred shows. Most of them were translated into multiple languages. We did over a thousand radio shows. Um, but what was especially caught my interest was the, 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 the footage that we had of Father Peyton speaking. <clears throat> Father Pey Peyton talking to families at rallies or just giving talks and they were beautiful and they seemed so contemporary and, and the ways that they were calling families to pray together. It's a simple message, but to say, when you pray together, you grow closer to God, you grow stronger to one another and you grow stronger individually as people. Uh, it's, it's such a formative and simple thing to do. And he gave his life to that. Well, we started put, to put that together and that, and then started to make the film. About the same time, Father Peyton's cause was moving through the Congregation for Saints and the Holy See, and um, he was declared venerable in 2018. So we thought, you know, what what better time to bring his message to the world again when the when the Holy Church is starting to recognize that this we may indeed have another saint on our hands. So that's we so we started to make the film. I hired a great producer. Megan Harrington and the team that we put together, we're really proud of. How long did the project uh, take for you guys to put that together? Well, it took, you know, we, we were digitizing material for about five years, but um, the actual filmmaking, we shot it and edited it over the course of two years. And then we, we, uh, we, it's been about a year distributing it and getting it out to people. Uh, Father, so my friend David Everest on Facebook had a question for you. He said, uh, I wonder what Father's thoughts are on how fast the world has forgotten this great man, Father Payton. He went from bringing crowds of 500,000 or more 
to now many have never even heard of him. And I think this is a great point. And I, I saw uh, David at the uh, – whenever me and Emily went to go see the movie, we went to the theaters and saw it when it came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, David just so happened to be there as well. And so there's a lot of people very interested in this. And before this movie came out, I had never heard of Father uh, Payton. And this that was the first exposure I had to him. You know, Father Payton was – a. Uh, he was absolutely driven and single-hearted, but I don't think he'd mind that he wasn't re personally remembered. I tell you what, ask anybody in the world, finish this phrase, the family that prays together stays, stays together. together. Mm -hmm. They know that. And that's what he would want. And um, so I think very quietly his legacy exists. The other thing is, you know, he did, he so believed in this that during the Vatican, to, the Second Vatican Council in Rome, he was he flew to Rome and was invited to to be be an observer, uh, not an official observer, but kind of was invited to be a consultant on things. And he lobbied really strongly to get the phrase "the domestic church" included in the the documents of Vatican II because he really be believed that family was that kind of thing. And so it is included in the 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 divine constitution of the church. The the phrase. Um, domestic church. So his influence is all over the place. Um, I, he was an humble enough man that I don't think he's too concerned that people don't know who he is. <laughs> well, he doesn't get to, he doesn't get what he wants. We, he, we, we're the ones that are going to make him a saint. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Uh, you know, one of the things that I uh, pointed out at the beginning of the show was my family and I, we pray the rosary uh, every night together. And it's, it's a longstanding tradition now. That we, and if pa Father Peyton was a part of that. The sort of guilting uh, you know, I had to experience Father Peyton years ago after my own conversion experience and the family that prays together stays together. So that was tugging on my heart when a good friend of mine uh, who uh, passed since passed away handed me a rosary on his deathbed and uh, challenged me to pray every day. And so that we, I have ever since. Um, but every once in a while, a couple times a week maybe, we play a YouTube video. We pray the rosary with the YouTube video rather than pray it uh, on our own. And Father Peyton is a favorite at the house. Uh, you know, it's black and white. It's the and then there's some old colored footage from from way back when, and you never see Jesus's face. It's always the back of Jesus. Well, Why did Father Peyton do that? The Vatican asked him to. Wow. Uh, when, oh. when we started doing Bible dramas in the early 1950s uh, and for film and television, he consulted with people at, at the Holy See, and at that time they were still not quite sure how what was the most respectful way to portray jesus and so that that was a request that they made later they changed so our, the later bible dramas have the face of jesus but i think it's always kind of wanting to keep the mystery of having people have their own image of what the face of jesus would be like it is fascinating even in a modern context to see that where you can never see the face of jesus but you see everybody else's face and you see their reaction to Jesus, and it's still very, very profound and powerful. So a uh, wonderful tool even today. Um, so the, the film came out in October uh, during a pa pandemic. Uh, how did that work for you, and where do you go from here? Uh, yeah, we released in theaters, and it was played in theaters across the country. We got a really wonderful response, lots of enthusiastic response and reviews from re people who had seen the film. We're really grateful for that. And people who write us and tell us the film it, it was the impetus for them to start praying or to begin, they've been praying, but they were going to start praying the rosary. Um, so that that's the good news. It came out digitally. It's out digitally now um, on the major platforms. We have a parish screening program now that we hope parishes will take advantage of. Uh, to show this in groups and use it for an evening reflection or a day of retreat, um, because I think it's a film that can lends itself to discussion. In addition to the story of Father Peyton, as you know, it, uh, all, we also wanted to show how his message is lived out today. So we include the stories of about five families and their kind of contact with Father Peyton, some of it direct, some of it indirect. Nevertheless, all of these families have to some degree taken to, to, taken to heart Father Peyton's message to pray together and it shows what, what happened in their lives. Uh, Father David Guffey is our guest. Emily, did, I think you had a question. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I mean, if you watch the film, he's just such an incredibly powerful figure. You can see his personality and his zeal just comes across so powerfully, like the kind of person you meet once in a lifetime. Um, where do you, what do you think was the source of this uh, strong conviction? 
Oh, he was a man deeply rooted in prayer. Um, he every minute that he wasn't doing something else, he was he he had always had a rosary in his hand, and he, every minute he wasn't doing something else, he was praying. It's I I don't know that I've I've seen someone so single hearted. I met him once, um, and when you were in his presence, there was such gravitas, a gentle a, a gentle kind of presence, but you knew that you were in the presence of someone holy, but. There was no distraction in this man's life. He was he was completely focused on this mission, which he believed to, had been entrusted to him by the Blessed Mother. And I believe for his canonization, he's a venerable now, uh, attempting to become a, a blessed. They do need a medical miracle. One is under review, but to our listener, um, if you are in need of a medical miracle, ask for his intercession, because that would be great. Yeah, and we get we get stories from around the world of people that have asked for Father Father Peyton for help and intercession and healing, and we have lots of stories that people share. Um, as I'm sure your listeners know, the Vatican is really really takes seriously before they'll declare something an official. So we have a couple of that have, have been reviewed on a diocesan level, and they're being reviewed at the Holy See now. What year did Father Peyton pass? 1992. 1992. And he's buried where right now? Right now he's buried in Northeastern Massachusetts. It's the community cemetery for the Congregation of Holy Cross. It's also where the international headquarters of his organization, which is called Holy Cross Family Ministries, resides. Family Rosary and Holy Cross Family Ministries and Catholic Mom are all in Northeastern. Family Theater is still in Hollywood uh, on the other side of the country <laughs> in the place you know, in the same spot on Sunset Boulevard that he was in uh, starting in about 1948. That's amazing. And if his cause does move forward, uh, please, uh, God, uh, let it be. Uh, what will happen? Will he remain there in Massachusetts or will he be moved someplace? What will, what will go down? We have uh, we have a great hope that we'll build a, um, a new shrine, um, a new a chapel for his remains. His remains will be exhumed and will be put in a, a new tomb where people, the public can visit and venerate and, and pray for intercession. Uh, so that's where we're cautiously optimistic. I always have to be careful. Um, obviously, the, we need to go through the process, but all that's in the works uh, should the should God make that all happen. All right. Praise be to God. Father David Guffey has been our guest. Father Patrick Payton has been our conversation. Father, where's the best place to go to get the information on the movie? Best thing to do is the website, praythefilm.com. It's got information on how to see it, how to screen it, how to buy it. All that information's there. Praythefilm.com. Praythefilm.com. Father David Guffey, God bless you. God love you. Thank you for being on the program today. Thank you. God bless you. All right, that's going to do it for first hour. If you want to get in on the drawing for the fir, uh, five free digital downloads, dear listener, all you need to do is join our email list. You can do that on our website at grnonline.com forward slash CDT or text the letters GRN to the number 42828. That's GRN to the number 42828. We'll send an email with instructions later today. God love you. God bless you. The game show is coming up in the next hour. We hope you'll join us for that. Until then. May God richly bless you. Thank you for joining us on Your Catholic Drive Time, where it is our pleasure to keep you informed and inspired. Join us Monday through Friday at the same time, right here on your favorite Catholic radio station. Don't forget to connect with us. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Be sure to share more than just us today. Share Jesus with everyone you meet. Bye now, and God love you.